Today we're actually walking through the garage, but before we get into that, I was actually bitten by a redback spider to um, cleaning up. <laughs> All of a sudden, uh, there's a good chance it's probably I've passed out from that. Only a baby one, so hopefully I can get through it. We're going to do a bit of a different one really quickly. Going to walk through the garage, give you a bit of an idea of what I work with, what the setup looks like. I'm not going to show you the other side because, geez, everyone's probably scared of that. Mrs. Octopus will probably... <laughs> decapitate me. <laughs> so that's a work in progress over that side. This is primarily my eBay side. I do have a storage shed up in Newcastle, which is quite probably half full, uh, probably not being utilized to the full capacity. So I'm trying to procure stock that actually move quite quickly. Uh, we'll do a what's sold, we'll go on the computer after this. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, but what I'll do now is I'll flick you around and give you a bit of an idea of what we're working with. All right, we've flipped the camera around. This is Boris, my animatronic werewolf. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you want me to do a short or a video with him feature in the future. He does look after the Octo Lair for me a little bit, so he's quite good. He keeps his keep, and he's quite friendly. He screams at people as they walk past. This is my book of shame, my bookcase of shame, if you will. And so basically what I'm doing at the moment is actually breaking down my single volume listings. I'm actually converting them into variation listings. Uh, once that's all done, I will basically beautify it, put it in alphabetical order and make it a lot easier to access and to look at. I don't particularly sell a lot of books, um, so I'm not too much in a hurry to do it from that perspective. Yes, I waste some time looking for certain volumes. However, uh, by next weekend, it should be spick span and good to go. So as we move further down the desk, um, these are the Star Wars variation listings that I've mentioned previously in videos and probably the podcast as well. Generally, I think all of them are listed at $14.99. They're late 80s, early 90s. Uh, $14.99 each with obviously the multi buy discount. If you do, they get 10% more. Uh, and I cap it at a $9.99 postage within Australia. And people buy about three, four, five, six books. Uh, someone's bought three books here, they'll get tomorrow. Uh, my beloved Luigi board just coming out for Halloween. And obviously, if I scare Grumpy Granny or she disappears again, I've got to reach out from that way. Uh, Ghoul Panic on the PlayStation 1, fantastic. One of the get books that sold today, I actually got down before I was cleaning up because I just went on a side quest. Uh, it's more of a, a comic book collection of graphic novels from um, a place called Commando. Bandits is actually um, in the What Sold video today for $5, listed for about a week, sat in my death pile for months, <laughs> listed for about a week, sold for $55 plus post. It's obviously got imperfections. This one here is Theo from PC Powerplay. I'm currently very fat and probably floating between an XL and 2XL on the way down. Uh, so I'm using this as a bit of a motivation to get down to that XL size. If you were like me, this is probably from mid nineties from memory. It's Theo, it was basically a quake monster that PC Powerplay used as a uh, unofficial mascot. <laughs> I don't know if they got permission, but we'll say they didn't. Really cool shirt. I'd love to wear it somewhere like the uh, the PAX down in Melbourne or one of those conferences or conventions, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, it's a fantastic shirt. I've got a price pretty high at $300 on eBay, so I don't have to sell it. Here we've got the clothing. Uh, so if you are in Canberra and you are looking for a wholesale deal, please reach out to me because I will sell you my clothing quite cheap. Um, I've had enough clothes. I need the space. I want to move it on. It's all sized, you're not getting Theo, but this is basically an indication of what I do. Um, put the size down there, put it where the shelf is, all these different things, so it makes it infinitely easier. Um, where I put that uh, shelf S8, so basically what I do, and you could probably do this as well if you're into clothing, I put shelf S8, which means that the shelf is redundant, right? It doesn't exist, and S means salvos, and $8, well, that's what I paid for that shirt. So that gives you an idea of what goes on. Uh, so these are my beloved Skylanders. So if you are into that kind of content, slide across my, my gaming channel, which is Octo's 8-Bit Dreams. I will have it in the, the description below. Uh, so basically a bit of a, a two-fold for that one for my reselling followers. Generally, well, the reason why I'm doing that for is to redirect people to my eBay store for Skylanders. Um, so I test all my Skylanders. Why not get paid to test my Skylanders um, and go from that perspective? So what I do is I stream from the Xbox Series X uh, across to Twitch, use a program that pushes it across to YouTube. And thank you to all those people that jumped in last night. These are Trap Team. These are the big ticket ones for myself. Before everyone starts having conniptions about how I store them, <laughs> they're perfectly fine. They don't move around. Uh, when they get removed from the shelves, I'll be very delicate with them. So realistically, I'll put them in very carefully. I don't throw them in the bucket. I have sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Skylanders. I've never had an issue with breakages or anything along lines of that. You just need to know how to store them. You just need to know what's fragile and from different perspectives. Uh, the big ticket ones are obviously 
in the top uh, in their own Ziploc little bags. Um, so like I said, it protects and gives that extra level of protection, but they are perfectly fine. They're not gonna be damaged, they're not gonna hurt anything, so don't worry too much about it. So this is what I was talking about a little bit uh, a couple of days ago on the live board games. I'm moving into this niche. Pretty much Grumpy Granny said it looks like it's set up like a, <laughs> a store, but I actually quite enjoy it. So I got Somberside, I got Gloomhaven, got some Warhammer and all those different things. So absolutely love those at the moment. Probably part of the reason why my sales are down 30% over the last week and also my cost of goods are up astronomically. So probably about two or three times what I normally spend on stock for a for a week. So going up here, we are looking at like packaging supplies. They're not really much up here going on. Uh, we've got some brand new in-box Skylanders there. Up here is where I keep my digital camera, my digital products, like there's a CD Walkman there. Uh, a golf ball, a cricket ball on the bottom. Uh, don't recommend buying support, sporting supplies. I probably will be delisting that soon. Uh, some cassettes, some fig pins, and all those different things. So anything that's kind of like really small and fidgety and I don't really particularly want to lose, I'll put in those buckets up there. Uh, moving down, we have, uh, this is a under construction shelf, right? So this is my video games. Um, I have said numerous times before, I am moving away from video games unless they're highly sought after or they tickle my fancy for some reason. The game at the back of the Switch, um, it's basically a deleted line or an out of print game, I suppose you could say. Uh, Japanese RPG game, I'm not going to say what it is because I can't even pronounce it, but one of those things that will probably go to two or three hundred dollars in the in the distant future. I paid about 40 bucks each for them, so like I said, I'm just going to keep them there and they're happy to stay there, brand new and sealed. Uh, if you are selling games, always, especially in Australia, uh, look for the Australian ones because they actually tend to go for a premium. Uh, so I do have some games here, such as uh, this Robin Hood one here. That is the Australian one, but it's actually the NTSC one. Uh, I don't have any American ones there. We actually have Eternal Sonata. So you can actually tell if it's Australian or otherwise. Uh, we've got Dark Souls, my beloved Dark Souls. Uh, you've got M down there, and we've got the teen rating on Eternal Sonata. So the Australian ones tend to command a premium by virtue. Collectors collect them. Further down, uh, we've got some, I suppose, Mega blocks, as much as I hate mega blocks, I'm a bit of a Lego snob in that respect. Uh, this is Warcraft, kind of tensing with the theme. This is my box of Japanese Sega Saturn games. They're a very slow mover, but there are some very niche games in there uh, that will probably go around. I'm probably going to have to promote them a little bit higher, but I paid $100 for the whole box that you can see there. And I think there's about three, four grand worth of listed value there. Um, a lot of weird games involving girls wearing scampy clothes and i'll probably leave it at that <laughs> before i cause an international incident but hey each of their own uh we're moving across the lego lego a whole tub of skylander portals and my tub's there so we're further down uh we've got some other stuff that i think t-shirts from memory just like basically uh retail arbitrage new in packet shirts uh, my beloved dixon uh don't recommend buying dixon anymore <laughs> so uh, I try and buy Dixon in my size because I tend to wear them a little bit, especially in winter. Uh, so XL. Dixon slides to the right. So what you do is basically, uh, if you are looking at Australian sizing, 2XL would be an XL in Dixon. And my anime DVDs there. And that pretty much sums up the, uh, the garage visit. I'm not going to show you the other side. Uh, it's a bit of a disarray, but that's not really my eBay stock. This is pretty much limited to here. As I've said numerous times before, this is probably 95% of my stuff that I keep here. Uh, so the other stuff uh, would be in, up in my storage shed in Newcastle. So primarily what you're looking at here is, well, it's contained in this house. It's about $65,000 worth of listed value on eBay. I do have some cabinets with my very, very uber high collectibles in them. Uh, but what I normally do is basically keep everything here, down here. And we'll flip across to what's sold. What I want to do is go through the eight most interesting sales of the week. Like normal, we don't go through the top sales because they're boring. No one wants to know what the top sales are. Um, more of those obscure, different, weird ones that you probably would walk past at the, uh, at the op shop, at the thrift shop. Uh, I'm very confident of your valuable time, so let's get right into it. So last week was a little bit less on the previous week, and... With everything, you can't win every week. Uh, so we were down probably about $200 in profit last week. We did have gross sales of $1,500 and down to $689, uh, down from about $950 from the previous week and about 
just over a thousand from the week before. Uh, the average sales was twenty four ninety eight, and the average net per sale was eleven forty eight, with the profit margin being forty six percent. Like always, a lot of the sources coming from Facebook Marketplace. Um, I am trying to reduce the reliance on Facebook Marketplace, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> we can't do much about it. Uh, so what we're getting down here is that I've set, spent a lot of money on infantry this week. So in the last seven days, that I still have a few sets that haven't been listed yet. So that number is going to be close to a thousand dollars. So the cost of goods for the last week were one hundred and sixty-two dollars. Uh, the marketplace fees were two hundred and seventy and three hundred and seventy-eight dollars for shipping labels. <clears throat> The new inventory was moving into a new niche, which I discussed on Friday night and talked a little bit in the video preceding this one. So we had 48 new listings, 60 sales over the last seven days, one day, which is a lot closer than it was previously, uh, five months average to sell. So it slid another month. Uh, return on investment was almost 300%. So basically, I showed you this video in the little garage display video I did earlier. So this is the book I picked up from uh, Salvos for 60 Sorry, I picked that from Salvos for five dollars, sold it for sixty-five dollars, which was fifty-four ninety-nine plus ten dollars postage. Took six days from my actually listed it. So this is one of those things that was sitting in my death pile probably for about two months. I picked it up, I seen it, did a comp at the thrift store, and seen it was worth a decent bit of money. Uh, however, never, never got around to listing it because I lost interest in it, <laughs> which is not advisable. So that was that one. We're moving to this one. So this is actually a um, PlayStation lot that I picked up yourself, Facebook Marketplace. I picked up, so it was about 100. Uh, it was a PlayStation 2 Slim plus 35 games. I took out a couple of games that I want to, for my personal self, and to sell on eBay separately. Uh, one of them is called Obscure. If you're not too sure of it or you've never heard of Obscure before, have a look at it on eBay. Um, it's one of those survival horror games you're probably looking out for. So there was two of these Guitar Hero dongles for the Sony PlayStation 2. I didn't think they would sell anything, if at all. Um, I did a comp on them. There's two varieties. So there's this one and there's another one. I can't remember what the other one's called. This one goes for the less amount of money, $29.99. Uh, the other ones are about that $50 mark. So what I did with this one is I actually put in the description that it's not the other one. However, I turned off free returns on this because I know what's going to happen is someone's going to buy the wrong one. It's their responsibility to get it back to me and go from that perspective. So this one, next one we're moving on to. So these are Fuji uh, cassettes. I'm not particularly sure. There's something to do with um, music recording, heavy metal or something, lines of that. I'm not ex exactly sure. So I picked up 10 of these units or eight of these units, sorry, for $5 and which worked out to be about 63 cents each. So I sell them in a single pack of two and normally sell them for about that $55 plus postage. This is the second lot I've sold probably in four months, which, you know, it's well and truly returning on investment. They're very small. Uh, they're not imposing on anyone. So they're happy to chug along and, and go from the background. Next, we have uh, some Lego instructions. Lego instructions do sell. I have videos on this previously. Uh, these ones are something that I actually sourced for free. And the same weekend, uh, someone put on some Lego instructions and I offered them $20, which were those big ticket ones that we seen last week. Um, and these ones, they had it for free around the corner. So what I did is I picked these ones up. These ones sat for a little bit. Um, they're more the vintage. I, I bundled them all up. They fitted in a little small satchel, so it wasn't too bad from that perspective. Christmas is rolling around quite quickly. I did sell some Halloween stuff, if you remember last week. This week, we're actually selling Christmas stuff. This is a Lamax uh, reindeer on holiday. <laughs> I'm not too sure what their naming conventions are. It is a retired product or out of print. It was tested. It was working. I actually put some video of this in its listing. Uh, paid $30, sold it for $160, including shipping. Shipping was a little bit more expensive than what I thought. So $33.45 in shipping. They paid $9 because I, I ch chose the wrong shipping option. It means to make it the $9.99, which is what I normally do with my postage. Uh, but yeah, return on about $73 wasn't too bad. Going to the next one. And so this one uh, I picked up on a trip back from Newcastle one day. I, I just stopped into a random op shop or a thrift store on the way back from Sydney to Canberra and found this for 50 cents. And <laughs> it is the most horrifying book I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> to say it's graphic uh, would be an understatement and it's aimed at kids. So basically it's a, a book to teach your kids about the birds and the bees. The, Got it a bit of publicity uh, on Amazon, the US, if you believe it. It was about $1,600 when I listed it. Someone sent me an offer for $60. 
and paid postage to the UK. So I was happy to get it out of the house for 50 cents. We can't win with animals this week. So basically, this is a steel book. I have mentioned previously video games. I'm moving away from video games. I don't particularly like them as much. I will keep an eye on steel books, right? So I paid, I think it was $5 for this at Finney's. Yep, $5 at Finney's. Uh, sold it internationally for $44.99. Went to the States. Uh, didn't include the game. It was just steel book. It did co- it include the game. I'm getting distracted by the dogs. Uh, and last but least, uh, we have the Lego Technic Cars Transporter instructions only. This is, you know, like I said, it's not phenomenal returns. This one came out of that big lot, which I literally attributed five cents a booklet to. Um, so thirty dollars of free shipping. The free the shipping cost just shy of nine dollars. Punched it out. Um, I did sell this a few times. People didn't realize it was the instructions. I did reach out to the buyer and said, hey, you do realize you're only buying the instructions. They're happy with that. So keep an eye out for Lego instructions, especially those Technic ones, those more obscure sets. You are going to get more money for Lego instructions if they're vintage or if they're probably 10, 15 years old. Don't buy current sets that are currently on, on the marketplace. Uh, from that perspective, you really need to buy big, big bulk lots of instructions. Like I'm talking about kilos and kilos and bounce them to make it worthwhile and make them as close to zero as you can. However, they'll be a very slow set through. But anyway, uh, if the animals haven't annoyed you much enough today, <laughs> I'll be heading off now. Thank you very much for watching all the way through the end um if you do like this let me know in the comment section below uh what kind of videos you'd like to see i am doing some streaming of skylanders i think i mentioned that a bit earlier across to my octo's 8-bit dreams channel i'll put the link in the description below uh, i'm gonna go scream at the dog next door and i'll see you next time bye